Well, it's great to be here. Great day. This has uh, turned out to be a, a pretty fun event to have you guys up here and do this with us. Uh, uh, obviously, we're excited about this class. I, I know every coach across the country that's signing players today are, are saying about the same things. They're very happy with their class, but uh, this class uh, was signed uh, with a lot of momentum that carried over from the season. Uh, Winning over at McNeese and finishing eight and four and finishing high in the conference the way we did and the fact that then I was given a new contract uh, all these things were very positive things on the football side that we could take the students and then we had statistics come out that uh, we're graduating more of our players uh, than any other team in our league and our APR numbers are good. Uh, then you get them on campus and show them our pretty facilities in our, in our campus and uh, it really carried over and this is a very good class. Uh, I think uh, Coach uh, Beasley told me out of the 23 high school kids that we signed, uh, 10 of them were all state players. Uh, we're very excited about that. A number of two-way players in this class. Uh, so uh, we'll discuss where we're going to uh, begin playing them when they get here to Lamar. But uh, there's a lot of versatility in this class to where we can be moving some people in the secondary to wide receiver, vice versa. And there's a couple of, of linemen that's played both ways that can do that for us as we go. And uh, Hi, Trey. And, uh, and so it's, it's, it's a great class. I think, do we want to do questions and then show the video or do the video and, and then ask questions? Which way we want to do it? Which way we want to do it? Let's do hit the video. Let's do that. But before we continue, just want to make one announcement. We've got a, a, a short time. Obviously, we've got some media in the room that they have other engagements that they get to. We've got a short question and answer time. We'll want to make that specifically for the media right now, and then when they're done, we'll have a time afterward for fans to ask questions. But if the media have any questions right now, we want to open that up, and then we'll get to the fans after. Before that. we do, I wanted to add, uh, our coaching staff did a heck of a job. We got out uh, and, and got after it this year. I think, like I said, the enthusiasm we had in the season, they took it and ran with it, and, and we've been all over the place. And, and this coaching staff, you know, I get to sit up here and, and do the press conference. They're the ones that did the work, and they got out and did a heck of a job not only uh, locating players and I, IDing the right players, getting them in here and getting them to, to visit us, and uh, it was a great, a great recruiting class because of their hard work. All right, questions? Coach, I know a lot of these kids played – on both sides of the football in high school. Is this the most athletic class you brought into since you brought football back? I think so. I, I think uh, the fact that, like I said, I kept saying it over and over, you see them on the highlights play on both sides of the ball, uh, that will continue here. I mean, we're going to plug them into places that we think they can help us, but uh, what it will allow us to do, uh, either injuries or recruiting classes as they develop and get older, we may have a player or two that we can move and we can already do it with it, with this bunch because there's a lot of athleticism in this class. Coach, you talked about the size of the guys that went after. And one thing is that the knock on the board, they've been kind of small, you know, in the South End Conference. Is that something you really focused on going into this uh, class? Well, we, you know, we've always wanted to, but it's been very difficult uh, uh, to get those guys. There's not a lot of them out there, and we really only wanted to sign three, maybe four offensive linemen. But when we found these guys, uh, we couldn't say no. And, uh, you know, we would, we would show interest in them, and they would show it back. And so we'd say, hey, let's, let's keep recruiting them. And I don't know if you all remember the, the first uh, one of these I had. I said, lineman, 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 we're never going to turn down a good offensive lineman or defensive lineman. And, and this class, uh, it's almost like when we've got a couple, another one want to be a part of that, and another one, and they just steamrolled. So, yeah, uh, we've always wanted to do that, but we've, we've hit on it in this class. Kind of a unique situation with no – returning quarterbacks. It's how, very. How important is it for these two transfers to get a lot of work in the spring? Well, it, it, it's, it's strange. We got uh, our whole receiving core except Mark Roberts coming back. We got a number of offensive linemen back. I think three of the five starters, uh, every one of our running backs back. And we will not have a quarterback take a snap in spring that's taking a snap for Lamar. So uh, that's, you know, talk about a question mark. But we got two uh, older guys, very intelligent guys, guys that played college ball. And they're going to have all spring uh, to fit in with the rest of this group. And I think uh, if you were talking about getting two freshmen ready and they wasn't going to be here till camp, uh, it would be a little more difficult. But these guys will have uh, all spring. And then we can work with them in the summer now. The NCAA has changed the rules and then with camp. And I think, you know, they may not the first week of uh, spring ball, 
uh, know as much as Caleb Barry knew at the end of the season, obviously so. But I think by the time we play, they'll be fine. And, and I like both of them. I think both of them, uh, we got a good, good battle. These two guys are going to really uh, strengthen that position. And, and I'm looking forward to the battle this spring. Coach, just before I came here, I was at Ozan and I talked to, to Rodney Randall. And he wasn't smiling, was he? Oh, he, he was very excited. <laughs> and the one thing that he emphasizes, you know, not only him, but Lamar, it's not like, oh, I'm settling to go for Lamar. Kids are getting excited about it. They're excited about the program. How, how easier does that make your job right now? Well, we, you know, we got a lot to sell right now. Like I said, uh, you, you know, unfortunately, uh, we're, this business is pretty cutthroat. Uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, competitive in recruiting, and you use whatever you can. And uh, when you have something on another school that's maybe not a negative, but it's the truth, you know, uh, a year or two of the past, I didn't get renewed. For some reason, every recruit always knew that. So we made sure they all knew this year I have a new three-year contract, that we did win, that we are graduating more players. We had, we had a lot more to sell this year, uh, and, it, and it showed. I think, uh, I think it's the best recruiting class we've had since I've been here. A lot easier to sell than when he first got here and you had a hole of, of dirt out there trying to recruit. That's right. You, know, you bet. You bet. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm very proud of the work we've done since I've been here. I think our, our coaches and, and everybody involved with Mars done a great job. But when you're selling something on the come and you're promising something, it's a little harder than when you can show them what you've done. And, and now we've done some things that we can point to, and it's made it a little easier. Keegan Mitchell, running back out of Oregon. Is he the best football player ever to come out of Corrigan? <laughs> 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 best best African American to come out. How's that? <laughs> no, but he's a good football player. He really is. Coach, when you, um, when you look at this list of recruits, are there. When are we going to get you a, a Lamar shirt and get you out of that cotton picking green you always wear? <laughs> you wore that on the sideline in Central Arkansas. You thought I forgot that, didn't you? Is it, it, where's Jason? Is it illegal to get him a shirt? <laughs> okay, all right. But um, when you look at this class, are there any kids automatic, automatically for you that you know will red shirt or will contribute right away, or is that something you evaluate throughout the summer? No, because uh, Cade Harrington changed my mind about all that. Cade was going to be red shirted in fifth team and didn't think much about him, and he came in here and ended up starting and being freshman of the year. And since then, I, I tell every freshman, come in here prepared to start, and then we'll see where it takes you. But I think uh, with the depth we have coming back, it gives us an opportunity to redshirt some of these players, but we'll see. We'll just have to see. Coach, I know today's a very fluid situation with all the signing classes, but have you been able to rank where your class is compared to other teams in the conference? No. I, 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 and if I could, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you know, we did first one here, and we had a few sports riders and not many other folks, but great crowd. And we had a couple years after that, the crowd thinned out a bit. But the season we've had this year, and now you look in the room and you see the supporters, how does that make you feel? Well, I mean, this is what we want to do, and uh, the momentum, like I said, uh, when that ball went through the uprights at McNeese, we've just carried it over, and it's just gotten – it's just grown more and more every day, and uh, it's been a very exciting couple of months. Capped off with a great class today, but you know the future is very bright, and, and this is part. This is a big reason why uh, we can do these kind of things, and we have tremendous support here, and that's part of the reason that we had this type of class. When they came to on their recruiting visit, they saw the support that we have, and it's an exciting time. Raymond, coach, you know, talk a little bit about obviously you got a significant number of transfers coming in, guys that played at Georgia, ULM, Texas Tech. UT, they understand what goes into being a college football player. How important is that going to be for them coming in? Your expectations for those guys. They obviously already know what it takes to be a college football player. How important is that for you guys, bringing guys like that in? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, uh, we had to take a number of transfers early on because if we didn't, we had to play with all freshmen. So we've slowly kind of gotten away from that to where, you know, half our team's not going to be transfers. But – I think we hit on six, uh, not only good players, uh, uh, good people. Uh, they interviewed well. Uh, they're all happy to be here. They're they're all good students, uh, and I think they'll fit in. And uh, you know, I I walked on junior college, and I went from junior college to Texas so twice. I needed a second chance. I think all six of them see this, 
as a, a opportunity. I think they're all intelligent enough to see that this is a tremendous opportunity, and I fully expect all six of them to take advantage of it and prosper while they're here on the field and in the classroom. Coach, what's the process for you now before mm -hmm. spring ball starts up? I'll answer that in a minute. I'm not, there is a process, but when I announce it, then it'll all go in another direction. So I got something, but but I do have something for you. For, for years now, <coughs> when Lamar didn't have a program, this was a pipeline for McNeese. I mean, they just came to Southeast Who? Texas and East Texas. I, I, I would never call it McNeese, I'm sorry. So, so McNeese was. So you're not really from East Texas, because no. it's McNeese down here. That's all right. Go ahead. So, uh, and it's also it's New Braunfels, not New Braunfels. <laughs> so, Coach, how, how nice is it to see that that, that pipeline's kind of getting cut off here and kids are excited to stay here? Well, I don't know if we've cut it completely off. We're kind of tightening it a little bit. But, uh, you know, Magnus has done a very good job in our absence uh, of coming in here. And, and then you look at their walls and you look at their All-Americans and, and the players they've put in the NFL, a lot of them are from this area. And so we've had our work cut out because it's hard. And you can't just, like you said, you can't do that overnight. Uh, but we're, we're going to get our share, and we're going to continue to work. And, and every year we play them, you're going to see a lot of guys on both sides of the ball that you know, and that's one of the reasons it's going to make it and continue to make it uh, the rival, rivalry that it is. We're about running down. I can get back to your question. Uh, we ready to do this? Okay. Uh, by the way, Johnny, I couldn't take your call because I was in the middle of a press conference. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't ignoring you. Okay. Only my grandson can interrupt the press conference. Uh, Larry Keck, who's done an outstanding job uh, as our offense coordinator. If you look uh, where Larry, where our offense was when he got here uh, in his three years here, uh, this past year we led just about every offensive category. Uh, players, in the backfield and at the receiver positions, we've broken just about every Lamar record uh, under his tutelage. Uh, Larry announced his retirement, told me he's going to retire uh, February 1st, so we kind of waited till the day to announce it. But I want to first publicly thank Larry for all he's done for me and for our program. And one of the reasons we were able to recruit uh, the way we have now was the statistics that we could show them from the last uh, couple of years. And Larry's done a great job with our offense, but he is retiring. Uh, part of me uh, wishes uh, he would stay. Part of me is very jealous that he can retire, and I can't. I'm not old enough. My wife told me I have to go at least 10 more years. Well, that's another argument for another time. But uh, with that being said, we're going to bump uh, Chuck Langston up to offensive coordinator uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, Chuck has been here uh, with Larry. He knows our offense. Uh, it'll be an easy transition in that side of it. Uh, the other side of it, I have a lot of confidence in Chuck as a, as a coach and a person. I know he's going to do a great job. Uh, and this is a good move for Lamar University and for our program. Uh, and he also is excited about the challenge, and I know he's going to take that and run with it and do a great job. Uh, between now and spring ball, that, that opens up an offensive uh, position on our staff. And within the next week to 10 days, we'll be interviewing and trying to fill that. If we can get that filled in time, and I think we will, uh, we'll move forward with spring ball uh, at the dates that we, we have out there. And you want to talk about the dates, you want me to talk about the dates for spring ball. Uh, spring ball will start Monday week, which would be what? The 16th. Uh, we're going to try to get spring practices done in three full weeks. We'll go every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday will all be padded practices. The Saturdays will be, sh uh, and the Fridays will be in shorts. Saturdays uh, will be scrimmages, and the first two will be in the mornings at 10. The last one will be our spring game, and we'll have more details about what we're going to do in the spring game, but we're going to try to make as close to a game as we can. But a uh, very exciting time. Uh, looking forward with the number of players that we have coming back. We only had nine uh, seniors, and with six transfers coming in, we're only three light than where we were when we played last year. So uh, this spring, we should, you should see a number of familiar faces out there. It should be a very productive spring. Uh, we should be very close to uh, playing with the players that are here this spring in the fall. Even though this is an outstanding signing class, um, they're all freshmen. We feel like uh, uh, the bunch we have now, you'll see them predominantly playing in the fall. Uh, what am I leaving out on that? Uh, 
Uh, I think one of the questions that's going to be asked maybe after we leave is, uh, well, they only had nine seniors and they signed such a large class. How, how was they able to sign that many players uh, when they only lost nine? Uh, we held back about six scholarships last year. We, we played with about 57 on scholarship or 57 scholarships given out. So we saved about six knowing that this was a small class and if we filled it up, we were only going to get to sign 10 to 12 guys. So we did that uh, on purpose. This class is a, a little larger uh, too because we have some outstanding students in this group that's going to receive uh, academic money from Lamar that makes our scholarship goes fur go further and uh, mm -hmm. that's a credit to the students uh, that Lamar is able to attract. Uh, I mean you'll see four or five of these guys in the engineering program and we've never had that before. Uh, one of them I said I told you is a Maribel finalist uh, if he doesn't get it, it he'll you know He'll be close and he'll still receive a lot. There's a lot of really, really good top students, top 10% of their class students in this group. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons we were able to expand this from about 15 to the 23. So I want to hit on that because I know that was going to, if you didn't see it now, you'd see it when you got home and you wondered that. Questions? Anything on, anything on the schedule here? Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, explain this. For the next four years, we can only play 11 games. We being FCS, NCAA, not Lamar. The NCAA says we can only play 11 games. We're in the Southland Conference. We will play nine <coughs> conference ball games. So nine and 11 are chosen. We're going to play one game up uh, to try to earn a little money. Uh, can we announce all three or no? All three what? The next three. First one you can last year. Okay, we're playing Baylor this year. So that's 10 of the 11 already <laughs> chosen. We have to find one game uh, for home. And in years past, we've been able to try to get FCS and do a home and home. Uh, we can't do that next four years with, with the odd numbers and, and the one game that we want to play up. We have to find four home games in a row. So it's going to be four individual games we have to find. So that's taking a little longer. But that, that'll be our schedule the next four years. Nine chosen for us, five of them on the road, four at home and flop, and then uh, one game up FBS, and then we will really search and look to find one more game, and, and probably all four of those will be at home. So when y'all are out and having your schedule discussions, uh, y'all y'all still won't, well, I say y'all, some people won't get that, we'll still have to explain it again, but uh, we've been very fortunate, uh, like this past year, uh, to play 12 games, and it and, and we had 13 weeks to do it, so we had more flexibility, but uh, we're just not going to have that the next next four years. What other questions? Cool. Do you know when the conference schedule is going to be released? I don't know off the top of my head when it'll be released by the conference. As soon as we get our last game done, we'll release our full schedule. And we're, we're very close to doing that, aren't we? That's what I heard. <laughs> huh? Right. Are there any further questions for Coach? Hey, I want to thank everybody for being here. This is fantastic. Uh, it's a great way to. I found here. This is a, a great way to culminate a great uh, recruiting uh, season. Is to see all you guys out here. It's very exciting. I wish it was football season, but it's not. So let's get out and support our spring sports, and I'll see you soon. All right.